The young child had proclaimed they were finally secure when Amber Gibson and her elder brother Connor were taken away from their violent parental home at the ages of three and five. They would no longer see their father dragging their mother by her hair, beating her until she was blue, or placing his hands around her throat. However, Amber's safety was sadly short-lived, as it turned out that her own brother was the worst danger. It was revealed yesterday, as a jury was convicting him of killing and sexually abusing her, that his biological father had just been sentenced to ten years in prison for a long list of serious sexual offences. The youngster who saw his heinous assaults is currently incarcerated and facing a life sentence. His innocent sister had lived practically her whole life in the foster care system and had previously experienced rape before she was slain. She was then brutally attacked by her own brother, who first tore at her clothes with the intention of raping her before strangling her. In an abhorrent epilogue to her grim fate, even the first person to discover her dead harboured sinister intentions. Stephen Corrigan accidentally came upon her and touched her improperly before burying her body. Amber was the most giving, caring, loving, supportive and admirable person, according to Amber's foster parents Greg and Carol Niven, who described her as having the most amazing outlook on life. She adored singing and the arts. However, the pair claimed that she was let down by the system throughout her life. In Lanarkshire's Wishaw General Hospital, where her brother and eventual killer was born two years earlier, her story began on the first day of 2005. By the time Amber came, a pattern of violence had already been established between her parents, Peter Gibson and his much younger lover Anne Marie, who are said to have met online. Between August 2001 and August 2007, Gibson punched and kicked the mother of his children at their house in North Berwick Crescent, East Kilbride, inflicting horrific abuse. The Nivens were recruited in 2008 to care for the duo in another Lanarkshire town after the youngsters were removed from their parents' house and placed in foster care. After Amber and her brother settled into their new house in Lockhall, worries about the elder child's attitude quickly surfaced. Mr. Niven testified at his foster son's trial that he would not leave the kids together because they were not a good mix. They briefly attended different schools. Amber attended Morehouse Academy, a secondary school for students with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties, located around 25 miles away in Bathgate, West Lothian, while her brother attended Keir Campus in Blantyre, Lanarkshire. His former classmates characterised him as a recluse who was prone to unprovoked outbursts of wrath. One of his classmates remarked he would talk about killing other students, which, to be fair, I saw as an overstatement but looking back on it now maybe the stuff he said wasn't exaggeration at all. A previous female student called him a disgusting human who threatened to rip her unborn child away from her. When the foster care arrangement ultimately failed, Amber, then 14, transferred into Hamilton's Hill House Children's Unit. Until the year 2020, when he became 18, her brother lived with the Nivens. 
20-year-old Jamie Stars attacked Amber in June 2021 after being freed on bail for another sex crime when Amber was in the care of the state. Her brother was a tenant at Hamilton's Blue Triangle Project, a youth hostel for the homeless in Lanarkshire. At the time of her murder, while she was residing at the Hill House unit, Amber's friend there, Angel McKean, 19, claimed the siblings' relationship was tumultuous. However, she said that she had been anticipating seeing her brother when she last spoke to Amber, only hours before she was slain. On the day his sister was slain, Connor Gibson contacted the Hill House unit to talk to his sister, according to care home manager Ian Curry, 55. Shortly after, despite Mr. Cree's efforts to talk her out of it, Amber went with him. She was never again seen alive. On social media, Gibson paid tribute to his sister four days later and wrote, Amber, we all miss you and you will sail high for the rest of time. Particularly me. GBNF gone but not forgotten XX. I love you, Ginger Midget. A few hours before his arrest for her murder, he published another message pleading with the locals to leave a light on for Amber. His biological father, who was 62 years old, was imprisoned for physical and sexual abuse while Connor Gibson was awaiting his murder trial. He admitted to raping a lady in East Kilbride after tying her up and blindfolding her, according to testimony given at Glasgow's High Court. Additionally, he gripped the woman by the neck, preventing her from breathing. Peter Gibson was also found guilty of kicking, hitting, and indecently assaulting a young kid. Other convictions included acts that were obscene and libidinous towards a boy. Yesterday, Mr. and Mrs. Niven attended court to learn that their former foster son had been found guilty. They stated in a statement that Connor was five years old and Amber was three when they arrived at their house. According to Connor, we are safe and they were, up until he removed the safety. Amber deserved to lead a life filled with opportunity and optimism. They continued, we as a family will never be able to forgive ourselves for taking this away from her. We are happy that those responsible for what occurred to her are currently in jail. The Chief of Serious Crimes at Police Scotland said yesterday that Amber Gibson should be remembered, not the two men who were found guilty. I'd honestly want to give them as little consideration as possible, to be honest with you. Detective Chief Superintendent Paul Livingstone said. I honestly think that time should be spent remembering Amber. There aren't any other terms that come to me that I would use to characterize them other than depraved. The top officer expressed his wish that Amber's loved ones would receive some measure of comfort from the convictions. The conduct of Corrigan and Gibson, he said, leave them both beneath contempt. In order to complete this difficult and intricate investigation, a number of Police Scotland's specialised officers collaborated closely with our colleagues in the forensic services. I would like to commend every one of these officers for their professionalism and commitment to their work. Although there may be more to be learnt from the case, the investigator claimed that it was difficult to foresee Amber's awful outcome.
In the care system and other systems, he said, so many things can be done, but not everything can be thought of, and nobody in their wildest dreams could have anticipated this happening at some point. Given their upbringing and the challenging beginning to their lives, you would have thought or imagined he would have been there for her. The only consistency in Amber's brief life was her brother. He ought to have been her innate guardian. He demonstrated the exact opposite.